um, I am a fairly uh, new developer, um, so hopefully I won't uh, mislead you that I'm some sort of solidity expert. Um, but the plus side of that is that we can kind of uh, struggle through this together and all have the same problems. Um, I am hoping this is kind of going to be just like a workshop of um, you know, whatever we want to learn. Um, we can kind of do that together. And uh, the plan is just to talk a little bit about um, what Cryptozombies is, who makes it, um, and then um, and what, what Solidity uh, and the languages, and then just kind of run through um, the first level of the Cryptozombies game, which kind of um, takes you through all the steps to uh, understand you know, the basic data structures and um, um, syntax for functions. Um, and creating a uh, contract and, and validity. And um, yeah, so we'll just run through that and then kind of work through whatever um, we want to on the own uh, from there. So it seems like pretty much everyone here um, knows, at least kind of on a super high level, um, you know, what Ethereum is, what, um, what we're trying to do. Uh, with crypto zombies, um, but yeah, obviously, like as much as I can answer, feel free to like stop and either inject if you know more than I'm presenting, or if you want to have questions, um, you know, and want to slow down and uh, dig into something deeper. Um, so, uh, what is crypto zombies? This is straight off the site. Um, it is basically uh, an IDE and um, it's a game that teaches you solidity through um, an IDE where you can write code and then step by step instructions which kind of go from the absolute basics um, of data types and then all the way through to um, you know, write, writing like uh, multi-part contracts or multiple contracts that kind of inherit from each other. Um, so, yeah, you can see it's a free interactive code school that teaches you to build games on Ethereum. So, if anyone else has used like Code Academy to uh, learn a uh, language, um, a programming language, then it's it's really similar to that. So. Um, CryptoZombies is made by uh, the Loom Network, some developers of the Loom Network, um, and their their kind of goal is to um, they see like a really big uh, opportunity for games on blockchain, especially uh, Ethereum, and um, for games to be created through uh, side chains uh, of Ethereum. So they have their own SDK. They have um, uh, ETH Fiddle, which is similar to if anyone's used like uh, JS Fiddle, which um, you know is just a way to share kind of snippets of code or you know example contracts that you've written up uh, with other other developers. Also, kind of have a way to, to run that code. Um, they have some a superset of Solidity, which they call Solidity X, which is just kind of their way to try to work out some of the bugs. Um, and I think they have, they have a whole bunch of other games. There's, uh, I think they just came out with like a Zombies Battlefield or something based on Crypto Zombies. Um, and they're coming out with like new levels of this game to kind of uh, keep up with um, you know, new features they want to teach. So you can check out more. They have, a, um, they have a page on Medium that has a whole bunch of articles uh, talking about their games and also like the uh, ecosystem at large. And uh, yeah, their website's at lumex.io. Um, so yeah, we're talking a lot about Solidity, but um, just on a high level, what is Solidity? Uh, Solidity is an object-oriented high-level language for implementing, implementing uh, smart contracts. Um, and particularly, 
it's the language of Ethereum, right? Uh, so it was kind of created um, created to, to mimic kind of the syntax of languages like uh, JavaScript um, to be able to kind of just write these contracts um, you know, on a, on a high level and um, have a lot of developers kind of port over their skills from languages that are already really familiar with. So try to make that bridge the gap um, with people who are already working, especially uh, on the web, um, to try to get those people to, to work uh, to create things in Ethereum. Um, so there, uh, yeah, I'll try to put these slides on the Meetup page. But um, you know, the docs are, of course, a good place to go to learn more. Um, so like I was saying, it's, it's uh, Solidity is influenced a lot by languages like uh, C++ or Python or JavaScript. Um, then they target the Ethereum virtual machine. Uh, Solidity is statically typed. If you've worked in other languages that um, aren't, uh, you know, you're going to need to find all your uh, returning data types, and um, basically you have you have to be a little bit more specific. So that kind of like creates a um, more security in um, all the all the functionality of, of the contracts and. Um, so some of the uses uh, for Solidity are, you know, voting, crowdfunding, um, building auctions, multi-signature wallets. Um, of course, there's, uh, you know, that's what the token standards are written in, like ERC twenty or uh, seven twenty, um, you know, for uh, tokens or or unique digital assets. Cool. So that's that's pretty much all I had as um, as like a, an overview of what we're talking about. Um, if you guys are into it, then I'll just jump into uh, the actual game itself, and we can start kind of writing some code. So yeah, if you want to follow along, um, you can just go to cryptozombies.io. And you'll get this screen. Um, so here's their curriculum, and they have all these levels here. Uh, and we'll just jump into this first one called Making the Zombie Factory. So I also, was, when I was kind of like looking over, um, some of how this, they, why they made this game. Uh, I think it was in part a response to if anyone's, you know, done the whole Crypto Kitties thing. It was kind of like, a, oh, that's cute, but here are Crypto Zombies, and they're here to eat your Crypto Kitties. Um, so this, this first page is just kind of like a, uh, you know, it's an overview of, um, the zombie is is this example of we can think of it kind of like the token, uh, where this contract that we're going to write called um, the zombie factory is going to produce these zombies. So they're all all going to be unique, and um, we can think of it more like the uh, ERC seven twenty contract where um, each zombie we're going to produce is has its own. ID, which they call zombie DNA, and uh, so this these kind of sliders just it's kind of like giving you an intro to um, the idea that you can have this unique uh, unique asset, and you know it's going to have we can like map um, all the digits in this DNA, uh, which which kind of like represents this unique asset, and we can map them to different features like. Uh, you know, head, um, like a different head for the zombie or a different eye color um, shirt or what, whatever. So, um, so 
So this is the first screen where you get to um, kind of write um, write the contract, and they just want you to make a shell, basically. Uh, and also, you know, just like a lot of languages, they have like versions, so they have um, they have to um, you want to give the right version here. Um, also, you know, important thing to consider is that once you deploy a contract um, on blockchain, it's going to be immutable. It's going to be permanent, right? So, like, once you have your code up, um, that's it. You you can interact with it. You can um, create more contracts and inherit from it, but that's that's the code. Um, so, you know, versioning is important. Um, the also like uh, what we were talking about earlier with uh, you know this this is a static statically typed language and there's obviously a lot of um, concerns about security uh, for all the use cases that make um, blockchains important. Um, so you know if you you're deploying a contract and um, you accidentally make certain you know parts of it public to be accessible like uh, in this example if you have like the zombies um, you know all the all the zombie IDs in uh, in an array or something and, and that's made public then you have to be aware that that's going to be accessible to to uh, anyone who can see the blockchain so um, yeah so uh, you can see the like um, has ID on the right, and then all these instructions on the left. I guess I'm not going to go be super tedious and, and walk through it here, but so now we're starting to get uh, you know into data types, and I think that's pretty pretty obvious for anyone here who's had some uh, pro programming experience. Um, they also talk about you can do basic, basic operations. Um, so we're also talking about st structs, which are, you know, um, kind of like classes within uh, a, a contract, so custom, custom data types, um, more pretty obvious stuff to object-oriented um, programmers here. Does anyone have any thoughts or questions or so for somebody that's getting started how do they I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to learn the objective you know so so is it sort of a um, you follow the instructions in order to learn the programming and, and um, yeah and they give you a step is it a tutorial of sorts yeah sorry so let me back up here um, so yeah, all the instructions are on the left, and they, they actually, you know, if even people with like pretty limited um, programming experience in general, I think can follow along. They're pretty pretty like explicit, uh, but they'll walk you through um, and give you code snippets. Um, just you know, trying to teach like one or two things at a time. So in this in this example, they're just teaching you about arrays and how arrays work in Solidity. Um, and you know we can declare an array. We have to declare the a data type that it's going to hold. So in this case, an unsigned integer, um, and it's expecting two elements in this array, um, and then you know the name of our variable that holds the array. So fixed array in this case, um, and you can do the same thing with uh, strings. So say you wanted to store, you know, um, a bunch of names in your contract. Um, of people who are like involved in your um, in a vote that this contract is kind of like helping manage, um, you can do that with like a uh, string um, array, and then uh, you know either do like in that case you would not want to declare a fixed size, so um, you can just do it like with this syntax here. Um, and yeah, this like this entire first lesson, it's fifteen. Um, 15 kind of steps, and each one of these 
you just do one piece of making this contract. So, um, you know, in this case, and they, you can, uh, after you write something, so say I tried to declare the array this way, um, you know, I have my data type, um, I have the square brackets, which indicates that I'm trying to create an array um, with no fixed size and then name it, um, say it's public, so it's accessible by, um, not just within the contract by the functions in there, but also by anyone uh, who can see the, or interact with the um, blockchain in general. Um, so once I have my code in there that I think, think I've learned how to make arrays, I can do this, click this check answer button and in this case, my code was what they wanted to see. So, um, you know, I get this little like victory thing here. Um, so I'll just, I'll just try to write, I'll write some code that um, isn't exactly what they want. So say I just like copy paste this. Um, it will give me uh, a hint down here in this box in the bottom right that says uh, it shows me which line of code um, had the error so which line of code wasn't what they wanted to see and it's you know this isn't this isn't actually um, running uh, this contract so I think their their um, hints are a little finicky like you have to be a little bit careful about like white space or like uh, you know putting things in the right order. But generally, it does it does a pretty good job of catching um, you know what you did wrong. And then also they have this <laughs> if you get really stuck. They have this show me the answers uh, button, and um, this highlighted line, the yellow is what uh, what code they wanted you to write to get this to work. And then the red is what you typed in. So if I put this into the contract now, um, just this new function that's trying to create a zombie and taking in uh, a name as a string and um, this DNA, that you know unique ID of, of uh, 16 digits um, that they uh, defined earlier. Um, so this is basically just the shell of that that function that lives within this contract. Um, Functions and those don't have return types. Is that because the type system is strong enough to represent the kind of answer you might want in terms of like multiple return types and such? So they do they do actually expect return types. Um, we're just getting away with not having it here because. Uh, is it inferred? It's just not returning. Like so, um, you do have to declare like void or you know oh, yeah. return okay. string. Empty. This is what our syntactic should be. Exactly. Yeah. So this is it's empty. So we don't have to do that right now. Um, but I I yeah, for sure. This is code super tiny. Um, great. So let's see. So yeah, like just um, kind of like we were talking about earlier, borrows a, a lot from languages like Python, and JavaScript, um, and Java. You have things like push, so um, you can. In this case, we're creating a new zombie, um, and we've declared this. Uh, We've declared this zombies array uh, that expects to have um, zombies in it. Uh, the data type zombie, which we declared in the struct up here. So we have this in our contract um, that acts as kind of like uh, a database, they call it. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. So um, if I were to put a number here, um, that can only that array can only hold five zombies or you know 
five things of, of this beta type zombie. Uh, otherwise, if it's empty, then it's it's uh, dynamic. So um, yeah, that's really that is a really important thing to uh, have sort of like a database on the blockchain, right? Like you're you're going to be able to keep track of, you know, for crypto kitties. Um, I'm sure it's not as simple, but uh, you'd have like a crypto kitties. Uh, array with like all of the crypto kitties and as soon as some new ones created then they just push um, you know that newly created crypto kitty to this like uh, massive array that's that's holding all of the uh, data um, Cool. So this one's just um, talking about uh, the idea of like private and public functions. So um, you know, if you have a function to create um, zombies or to add tokens, um, let's say you wouldn't necessarily want that um, create tokens or, or add tokens function to be accessible by just anyone, right? Like that should be uh, private, which um, which means that only other parts of the contract can add those tokens or create um, you know a new token. Um, for Solidity, they also have uh, a thing. Um, they have public and private functions. Um, they also have internal and external, I believe, which internal. Um, will let the function be called by uh, another class that inherits, um, or another contract, sorry, that in inherits uh, this contract. So like we were talking about earlier, um, if you have, once your contract's deployed, it's, it's deployed, but you can uh, create new contracts that inherit from that original contract so that uh, they have all that functionality, but you know, maybe there's a new feature that you want to add, there's a new, um, something you want to write, uh, and, and those can call these functions if it's with that uh, internal keyword. Um, and external, I think, is some weird use cases, but it's pretty much like public. Uh, it's just not able to be called by the contract itself. So here's um, what we were talking about earlier, where you have to uh, explicitly say like what data type you want to return. So um, in this case, we we're saying that like this say hello function returns a string. And also, it talks about view meaning that it reads and doesn't write to the blockchain that function. And I'm talking about the functional environment function. Um, oh yeah. And then. Pure says that it doesn't read from the blockchain. Can you not do both of these at the same time, or would that be like view pure or something? So no, you, wait, actually, that would make sense. Yeah. yeah. So is oh uh, yeah, as I understand it, um, view just means that um, you you aren't yeah you aren't modifying anything on the blockchain. You're just viewing some data in a contract, and then. Um, you know, you're returning this string, this example, somewhere else. Um, let's see. Pure. So does that mean that if you don't have a modifier, then that's what you do in order to be allowed to modify the state? So I think if you don't, if you don't specify, um, then you can just you can do uh, do both. Okay. Is my understanding. So these are restrictions on yourself, so you don't mess up. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, pure um, doesn't even read uh, read state from from the contract. It just, in this case, multiplies a a times b, which is kind of pointless, but.
Is this going too fast or too slow? Anybody? No. Okay. Um, how many of you guys want to? If you want to, like, you know, just start doing this yourself, yeah. and then um, if anyone has questions, you can I'm come. I'm curious, like, how far is it going from like contracts versus understanding like programming itself? Does it get yeah. So um, that's a good question here. So it does start this end, the end of this um, first like chunk of uh, <coughs> lessons. It does um, start talking about you know, and this is what Eric gave us talk on uh, last meetup. But um, yeah, like web web three stuff. So like interactivity with mm. JavaScript interfaces and. Um, yeah, kind of like how, how you can start to use this in um, in the real world with like, uh, you know. Um, so how does this compare to the Remix Editor? Are you familiar with the Remix yeah, Editor? Yeah, so... So the I, Remix Editor, you can kind of test out your scripts, but also deploying on the chain. And, and I presume that you could probably do this straight from in this environment, or did, does it get to... It it isn't quite that. I mean, it, this is really like more of a contained environment. More more of a contained. It's it's just just like um, you know, Code Academy or something. Um, it's really really focused on like just yeah, teaching you actually how to write the, the actually, contracts and contract, stuff. It's just a matter of copying and pasting the code someplace and hitting directly. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, you know. And paying some money. Thanks some gas. Test it first. Yes. Um, so, so then you might copy and paste it like into the remix to kind of take it from there. Exactly. Can... Yeah. So like, uh, you know, yeah, you can run. I don't know if I've, I haven't actually tried uh, pasting any of their code into um, into remix itself, but like, I think you know, remix is obviously like. Functional and a little bit more. It's less less friendly to like kind of start writing uh, the code. So, um, you know, but here is yeah where you can actually see, um, you know, real real deployable mm -hmm. solidity, and it's like a valid example. Um, yeah, I mean, do you have any advice for like? Well, I just had a different question, um, yeah. which was more like uh, you were stepping us through these fifteen steps of a given tutorial. But I was trying to still grasp what is the bigger picture of crypto zombies? Do they have multiple such tutorials, and and, and, and yeah. can you like browse different course material and, and different things that you want to learn, and, and and then beyond just completing a tutorial, do do you end up creating something that that is playable or, or that other users that create their zombies can interact with? Or is it just just a single learning experience for a single individual? Yeah, I mean, so they do have, you know, they have a lot of lessons here. You can take a look at, um, they have, you know, this like ERC-721 uh, um, that, Walks you through. If you click on the little menu on the bottom left, it will give you the table. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, so they have, I mean, they have like how many chunks of these lessons so far? Um, you know, there's six, six of these here, each which have like 15 lessons. Um, I don't think that the goal is to wind up with something that you're actually going to deploy. I think it's it's more just like if you're a developer and you want to make you know a game on the side chain, then this is like basically going to get you to being able to create that. Um, yeah, obviously they're coming out with more lessons. They have uh, let's see here, this other. So they do have 
um, some yeah. deployment lessons as well. They have something coming up this week if you scroll down past the lessons. Looks like they have selling plans for things that people actually use in the chat. Oh, cool. Okay. It sounds like they're probably using a side chain, not really watching. Yeah, so all of the goal of all of these is to basically have a, um, something running on a side chain just because it's, you know. Uh, yeah, you can delete it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little, a little more practical and, and you know. Cheaper. Cheaper performance-wise, it's going to be uh, a little bit faster, especially for you know, like um, games have a lot of interactivity, so like it's kind of it's kind of harder for for that to be uh, you know in the main <coughs> main chain. Um, yeah, I guess do people want to go through this on their own, kind of do a little workshopping, or just have more of a discussion on? Uh, solidity or, or this in general? Yeah, maybe a discussion. So I'm trying to get the big picture also. Yeah. You know, I've got an idea for a game uh, you know, that would be um, getting rid of Flutter cross platform. And is, you know, is that something I can connect to this? And do I do that because uh, I'm being paid through? Or I'm, I'm trying to really understand what 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 action services that that you're providing because a little bit it sounds to me like I'm actually deploying the game into the blockchain and I'm deploying it using these tools and objects and language and I'm, I'm trying to correlate that with a very very sophisticated game in my life and can you actually do yeah, so I think you you, you kind of wouldn't want to um, do all the real like game logic yeah. on <clears throat> blockchain because uh, you know some of the it's like like we were talking about earlier it's not going to be fast. You have to do all this like cryptography to um, to like. Anytime you want to store data, and anytime you want to, uh, you know, um, update like state, basically, you're gonna have to make a new iteration of the blockchain. Yeah. So it's like it's really impractical for that. But for something like um, CryptoKitties, where you know they're basically just um, using it as a way, using the blockchain as a way to keep track. Of all of the and ensure the security of all these like digital assets, like these unique things, um, and make sure that no one tampers with that that ledger of all of these unique assets. That's where the blockchain part comes in. So maybe just having, um, you know, having like for the CryptoKitties example, all the anytime the CryptoKitties are created, like a chunk of them gets updated on the blockchain and then they, they exist and you know that you can count on that one being a real crypto kitty and being unique um, and that's what gives it value to trade because you're like okay it's on the blockchain it's verifiable it's I can use one of these methods that were in this contract that are deployed uh, this contract is deployed so I know it can't be messed with um, so I can use this like is valid crypto kitty function to go make sure that this is a real thing right. um, and then you build out you know the rest of the interface and like um, the the trading uh, the crypto kitties all happens in this like front end that's not going to be written in solidity it's just going to call on one of these functions in the contract to go like check you know do that is valid crypto kitty or create a new crypto kitty Essentially, it's a back end that lets us specify certain kinds of APIs. Okay. So it might be, you know, that's sort of an asset class, and in the game, you know, you're purchasing it from somebody else. So that this back end actually kind of uh, guarantees that the transaction takes place and sort of verifies who owns what. 
And is it in any way connected to getting real revenue from the user of the game? So, um, yeah, maybe another use case that would be a good example would be like creating your own token for the game. Yeah. So, um, you know, there are these contracts that are, they're like, the Solidity code is out on GitHub. And if you can go and learn, um, you know, how to read that code and be confident about it, uh, you can go modify those contracts. So say you want like a unique digital assets contract that you see 721. That code is out on GitHub. You just have to go, you know, copy it, um, fork it, whatever, and then like uh, modify that token to be what you want to like, you know, um, I don't know, I can't think of like a good example, but like for, uh, you know, for your game, you're gonna change the name at least of this token and you're gonna change like maybe some um, ways to go call create new tokens or change the amount of how many tokens exist or like will ever exist. Right. Um, and that's all written into that contract. And then you can go just uh, like Eric was saying, you can go on Remix, you can paste that code in to Remix, um, paste some gas and then deploy it. And that'll be on the real like uh, Ethereum blockchain. Um, so then your game can just go, um, you know, use these tokens and um, give them out when people like get to a certain level or um, so say for instance in, in, in my game idea, uh, I'm using a premium model, and so you know, basically they download it, they play it, if they want an advanced feature, uh, I'm requiring a token, mm -hmm. and I want to get paid for them actually buying that token. Um, how would I do that in this framework? How would, how would the user actually pay for something that gets inserted into this blockchain? Yeah, I mean, you'd have, um, so you'd either, you'd either maybe like create your own token or you would just have a contract that has like, uh, that interacts with real Ethereum wallets and then like just, um, you know, have, have like a pay to an Ethereum wallet that the game owns. Yeah. Um, so I, I think there are probably a couple of ways you can do it. Um, okay, so it that sounds like this, this environment doesn't simplify that process. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean your own logic. Yeah. yeah, this, you know, yeah, this is just teaching you how to like um, understand those, those contracts and there are more contracts that are available for you yeah. to like kind of, uh, it's not just those two that I, I keep mentioning, but those are the two standards for like, you know, a lot of people are using the ERC-20 contract that's written in Solidity to make their own coins back when everyone was just making their own coins because oh. they could get rich off it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so there are a lot of contracts out there. Uh, you can make your own to your own like needs for the game or you can just, you know, kind of create one, create a contract to like uh, handle the the interactions like payouts for and uh, for like in Ethereum. Um, do you have any? Is crypto please take cuts of any of the transactions of asking cash now? That's a good question. I have no idea. Um, and is that crypto kitties? I don't know. Is that, but I was going to ask the same question about Loon Network. Did, what's their mm -hmm. profit model? And they, they invested obviously a lot to make this course material gamified and fun, so yeah. the learning experience is enhanced. So are they charging users for tutorials, or is it freely available? Or no? Yeah, Crypto Zombies is all free. Um, so yeah, all the how can they invest such a good effort you know, into making learning fun like that? Probably because they raise so much money. Yeah, yeah. Know that yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and what's the broader yeah. scope of Loom? Yeah, yeah, here, let's go to... Uh, Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it looks like they do side chains. Not in theory. And they have not experienced. Yeah, they have a whole bunch of articles on uh, medium to. I think um, they're, they're trying to be a platform for that. Yeah, it seems like they really want to be like, like start the whole, you know, games on sidechains world, and then be like controlling that ecosystem. Um, yeah, like here's. Here's their like medium channel. They have all sorts of like 